Hello everyone, welcome to the channel here of Meaty Mark Weather. It's great to have you here. We are going to be looking at the tropics as we usually start off with here. An area from the Northwest Caribbean in the Gulf. Bears watching over the next several days. It could potentially become our next tropical storm. And unfortunately, maybe a hurricane here. Well, all eyes are on the Gulf of Mexico as we head through the next several days. We'll be looking at your Hurricane Kirk out here and several other storms that are likely to develop and all your weather. Let's get into it. So taking a look at our infrared satellite picture here, you can really get a good idea of what's going on. We have a tremendous amount of shower and thunderstorm action right around the Yucatan right southwest of Jamaica and the Cayman Islands moving on the islands here. And then we got this area in the Pacific that's going to be providing moisture as well. All right, so starting off with the European model and progress towards the GFS as we head over the next couple days, this is going to be the watch phase. So essentially we have lots of moisture here in the Northwest Caribbean and the Southwestern Gulf here. We got a few moisture sources from the Pacific and the Caribbean pushing in here. And this is going to help congeal this system together over time. It's going to be a slow process. Here's October 3rd into the 4th and into the 5th. You start to see where this low pressure is going to start to take root here, just north of the Yucatan Peninsula. Now, one thing to note here with the European model, it is going to keep this system a little bit weaker and further to the south. We got this big blocking high to the north. There's that low kind of cut off to the east here. The only real troughiness we get is way up here in Northeast North America. So we don't have a trough to really kick this out. And as you can see here on the European model, lots of moisture. This is a very large circulation. So the Europeans kind of hinting to us that it's going to have a hard time getting its act together initially. And I'll show you on the GFS. The GFS really starts to blast this upward, so to speak. So as we head into the 7th and into the 8th, you start to see... Okay, the European model is hanging the low pressure back here and focusing the heaviest rain on Florida. This would be the worst flooding scenario here because this is more long and drawn out. The European model keeping this high pressure much further to the south. And you see there's a trough up here, but it doesn't really have too much time to capture this system. And it kind of just meanders for days in the central Gulf of Mexico with its very broad area of low pressure. It keeps this moisture on the east side focused across the central and southern Florida peninsula, which would be very, very devastating as far as heavy rain is concerned. You do start to see by the 10th into the 11th, though, this system does start to move towards the east-northeast, towards the Florida peninsula, and then eventually the 11th try to make an exit. As you can see, this little trough up here in the northeast might be enough to bring this across the Florida Peninsula. All right, so let's take a look at the GFS here. This is very concerning because the GFS is still trying to indicate that some sort of hurricane will come out of this. So as we continue through Wednesday into Thursday, you get the idea there's a few pieces of energy here. The first one trying to close off some sort of low here, and then we have showers and thunderstorms continuing around Jamaica and the Cayman Islands. As we head into the 4th, into the 5th, you start to see it start. it's looking like it's consolidating its energy here across parts of the Western Gulf, but we even have bands of showers and storms all the way up into the eastern gulf here so this is a very large circulation gfs is indicating it does start to get its act really together here towards october 6 and look at that i can just zoom out a bit you can see what's going on here we got a big old blocking high up here similar to what we saw with our predecessor here hurricane unfortunately and then as we continue through the six into the seventh here Unfortunately, there's going to be moisture streamed well out ahead of it here into parts of Florida, and this is going to saturate the ground well ahead of this storm. As it starts to get pulled towards the northeast here, GFS trying to indicate that this becomes a hurricane towards October 7th and 8th. And unfortunately, you can see we do have a little bit of a trough in the vicinity here. That could be enough to help push the system right across the Florida Peninsula here as we head into the 8th, into the 9th. And unfortunately, it's going to come very close here. This does not look good here to Tampa. So this is a this is a solution we're going to have to keep very close watch on here. Here it is on the 9th at 5 a.m. coming right into Tampa here as a hurricane. So we have plenty of time to watch this, but 
at this point, you know, we're out not, you know, eight to nine days here. A lot can change. So stay tuned. Things are going to get very interesting here. Uh, and this trough could help push this towards the direction of Florida eventually. But we'll be talking about this in the Gulf for several days. And we can watch and follow this thing right across the Florida Peninsula from Tampa through Orlando and then right out the other side here on the east coast of Florida. It looks like its trajectory is due east here. And before we continue with more weather coverage here on Model Analysis, don't forget if you made it this far in the video and you like it, smash that like button, everyone. It really does help. Question or comment down below. I love to read your questions or comments. And don't forget, if you haven't subscribed yet, what are you waiting for? Hit that subscribe bell notification button so you're alerted with all my future weather video updates. Let's continue. All right, so taking a look at our dry air and the mid and upper level layers here, thanks to tropicaltidbits.com. Look at this. This is where the moisture is. There's Hurricane Kirk. There's our next potential system. We've got some dry air here into the Eastern Caribbean. As we continue out here in time, you see that surge well into the northern and eastern Gulf of Mexico. We got this dry air to the west protecting Texas initially. There's our systems recurving. But look at this. This, this is going to be a very complex system here in the Gulf. We have the moisture crossing over from the Pacific as well. So we have that Pacific influence coming in as well. And Look at this. On the GFS, it's just kind of coiling around the southwestern part of the Gulf until it starts to intensify into a concerning hurricane here. 974 millibars here by October 8th. So this run of the GFS is very concerning and deflecting it a little bit in the direction towards Florida here. And let's take a look at our European model here. There's our hurricanes out here into the MDR just blasting up. Now here's our system here into the Gulf keeping it kind of weak here on the European model and further south and east, crossing the Florida Peninsula by October 11th. So the European model would be the model here for more optimism. But the GFS has been pretty good lately, so we cannot discount the GFS as well. One thing to note, though, the steering currents do remain pretty weak until about this time where you see this big upper level low, you start to see a trough that may try to bring this system up towards the northeast. And if we just take a look at wind shear here on our European model, you can see most of the wind shear stays well to the north of the system over the Gulf Coast states, and it stays on the southern periphery of that, pretty well protected. Uh, if it does try to stray a little bit to the north, though, it will have a tendency to get sheared out here. One thing I want to note, look at, look at out here. There is virtually no wind shear. So if we take a look at the direction of what this system could with respect to the energy as well, our cyclonic vorticity here. Here it is into the Gulf. In fact, let's just go right into as close as we can here. Here it is on the European model. There's that energy across the Gulf. You can see there's really no clear path or, you know, steering currents here. It's, it's pretty meandering, at least on our European model here. Now let's take a look at the GFS. So here we go with the GFS run. Here we go into the Western Gulf here towards Sunday, October 6th. So yeah, we're going to be talking about this system for a while. And then it approaches Florida here as a hurricane. Wow. Just west. This this is concerning for Tampa, but you know, this is pretty far out. Um, so we, we have plenty of time to watch this. But here it is. You do start to see evidence here on the GFS. See this up here? This is a trough. It's going to be attracted to this, so it's going to come northeast at least in this solution across Florida. And look at this. We still have a tremendous amount of sea surface temperature heat to work with from the MDR westward towards the Caribbean, the rest of the Atlantic, well into the Gulf. This is very concerning for the rest of October into November. So looking at the Western Caribbean here and Central America, look at that. Jamaica and the Cayman Islands are going to continue to see some showers out of this until it really moves into the Gulf and Central America here. Look at that. That's what we're going to be looking at, though. Tremendous amounts of rainfall here. Might even be a little bit more here in the Yucatan Peninsula. And that there we have that crossover moisture from the Pacific feeding in as well. That's a big wild card we'll have to keep a close watch on. But look at this. Anywhere in the yellows and the oranges, we're going to look at 100, 150 millimeters of rain here. Four to six, maybe seven inches. Here across the Cayman Islands in Jamaica, we're going to see about... 50, 60, maybe 70 millimeters, locally higher. 
that is going to net you, you know, about three quarters of an inch to an inch and a half, but enough to cool you down here in the Eastern Caribbean here through the Bahamas. Look at this. So we're mostly dry through this week here, the Lesser Antilles, Puerto Rico, until we get to the weekend. We start to fill it in here with a big tropical wave that starts to move through from Trinidad, Tobago up through the Northeast Caribbean islands here as well. We could see about 40 to as much as 60 millimeters of rain. That'll net you anywhere from about a half, three quarters of an inch, all the way up to an inch and a half in some places. The Bahamas here, it's mostly in the Western and Northern Bahamas. You'll see that 90 to 125 millimeters, three to four inches. But look at the Southeastern Bahamas here, almost nothing. All right, so let's take a look at our precipitation totals here on our European run. Uh, let's just uh, get that right over to QPF. There we go. So we got a little bit of light uh, system up here into the Ohio Valley into the northeast. That's going to be about a quarter to a third of an inch on average. And then look at here the Gulf Coast areas, especially Florida, as we head through. I mean, this takes us all the way through next week. So we're going to be dealing with this potential system for a very long time here. And look at this, especially as we get late weekend and next week. Could have totals approaching 6 to as much as 12 inches of rain. This is a great concern, especially for the Florida Peninsula. But look at this. We try to get some moisture across coastal Texas, Louisiana, and all the way through the rest of the Gulf Coast states as well. So let's take a look at the rest of the tropics here on our European, and I'll show you the GFS Kirk is going to become a major hurricane out here. The only good news is it's going to pass between an area of low pressure and and high pressure so it finds an exit strategy here hopefully we can keep it away from the azores over here and bermuda as well so let's see the exit strategy here on kirk kirk is likely to become a major category three hurricane maybe a four would not be out of the question some of the models taking it up towards a four but that is going to be a massive hurricane right out here into the central atlantic and then you start to see it push towards the northeast it's going to be really close here for the azores so stay tuned it could get a little ugly. And then we have another system. That's what this system south of the Cape Verde Islands here. We could be looking at another hurricane following right in the same path here. Unfortunately, this one starts to curve a little early and it may pose a threat to the Azores right around the middle part of October. And then this last frame, let me just show you these last couple frames here. Look at this. We got some big old tropical waves out here. Just lining up across the Atlantic. Some of these are becoming a little further to the south because this time of year, the Cape Verde season does start to taper off some. But look at this. It's still pretty active out here. And the Caribbean really starts to light up. And so does the Gulf here towards the 11th. And here we go. The GFS, the rest of your tropics here. We are essentially looking once we get past that system here in the Caribbean, Jamaica and the Cayman Islands clearing out here towards October 5th and the 6th. Still dealing with the eastern part of the Gulf of Mexico there with our potential hurricane. Here's Kirk just blasting it up here. Yeah, they can see that well-defined eye recurving. We'll have to see if it gracefully curves around the Azores here. It's going to be so close here because here are the Azores. Look how close this storm will become here, at least on the GFS. And then another hurricane trying to form behind it here. So things are really getting active. There you can see it forming an eye, taking a similar path to Kirk. So we're looking at Typhoon Craython. It is going to be targeting Taiwan here over the next 24 hours. Thankfully, it will weaken a bit, but unfortunately, it's going to go through a major weakening phase right over the island. Here it is, the second into the third there's going to be tremendous rainfall totals. We're going to look at totals, those totals momentarily. We could be looking at over 200, 300, maybe 400 millimeters in some of these areas. Now, initially, the stream is feeding into a synoptic system. So you get South Korea and Japan into this. But eventually, that high pressure is going to build into Eastern Asia and protect Korea here. So Seoul looks nice down to Shanghai. But the Japanese islands, unfortunately, get pummeled with this moisture until about the 5th or the 6th. You do see another surge here across the Korean, South Korean peninsula here. So maybe some showers and thunderstorms uh, towards parts of Korea. But look at this. We have a few uh, intertropical convergent zone system, tropical waves lining up here. This one might actually spin up well east of the Philippines. You do see the Philippines. They just got done with a lot of rain from this typhoon in the northern tip here. Uh, but unfortunately, 
Look at this. We're going to start lining up these tropical waves again, and we may have another typhoon forming come the middle of the month. And here we go for rainfall totals. This is the area from Taiwan. We're going to be looking at tremendous rainfall totals up through the southern Japanese islands. Could not be surprised here to see 250 to 400 millimeters plus across Taiwan here. We're going to look at a solid 12 to 20 inches here. And even the Korean Peninsula getting into about 90 to 125 millimeters here. About three to four, maybe five inches. All right, so our future radar here as we go throughout the rest of the evening hours of your Tuesday evening. Yeah, we could have some showers and thunder showers moving through the Ohio area, Cleveland, Akron area, up to Toronto. A few showers heading south here across Florida. A few gully washers and then off the outer banks here. So let's just put this into motion. You can see this front's going to be moving through eastern Ohio, western New York, western Pennsylvania. And then look at this throughout the day. Here's 9 a.m. on Wednesday morning. So we got some showers and thunderstorms moving through western New York and Pennsylvania. They do start to weaken as they push into high pressure. And look at that. By about 11 p.m., they are a fading memory. Now we have this area of low pressure off the Outer Banks. So far, it looks like it's going to stay off the coast. And then our attention is going to turn to the Gulf of Mexico here. As we head throughout the 3rd into the 4th, Look what's pushing up from the south here, our initial shot of energy that could try to develop here. So we got a very large, drawn-out area of low pressure that we're going to keep an eye on here across parts of the Gulf Coast. All right, so picking up where our HRRR or our future radar here has left off, you can see as we head throughout... Uh, Thursday into Friday, high pressure building into the east. All eyes are going to be on the Gulf, however. Look at that. Yeah, that's pinwheeling north towards the Gulf Coast here on October 5th. But the steering currents are so weak, uh, there's not going to be a very good uh, indication of where this is going to be headed. So here it is on the 7th. You can see high pressure building in. We do have a weak front that will be moving through. Let me just back that up just a tad. So here we go. We go back to the 6th and the 7th. You can see right here on the 6th, right around, yeah, Sunday. So this is Sunday evening. So thankfully you get most most of the way through your weekend. But that is going to come through Cleveland, uh, Buffalo, Sunday evening, and then into the Northeast on early Monday morning. That is going to kick out to the Canadian Maritimes. The only weather we're really talking about here is Florida. Big surge of tropical moisture and maybe this upper level low up here into the Northeast. But there's no troughs to really kick this system out. All right, so getting into Canada here. Yeah, we got a big massive low up here into Hudson Bay. As we continue throughout your Wednesday here, you got a sharp cold front and then a few troughs moving through Ontario and the cold front moving through Quebec here. So things will be getting gusty behind this. This winds up for October 5th and the 6th. We have another system heading out of Saskatchewan and Manitoba a weaker system over here in British Columbia, and then this upper level low kind of stuck over New Brunswick, Prince Edward Island, and Nova Scotia. And look at this as we continue to go out here in time. Yeah, this is uh, quite a pattern we have. Pretty quiet across much of the southern and central provinces here. Canadian Maritimes remaining a bit active here as we head through the 7th into the 8th that low pressure really getting bombing around newfoundland here but look at this high pressure just building into the central prairies here eastward into ontario one thing to note these pacific systems are becoming a thing here out here in british columbia and alberta so canadian rainfall totals here southeast canada over the next week or so we're going to be averaging about 40 to 60 millimeters nothing more except down here through New Brunswick and Nova Scotia, Prince Edward Island. That's where we could see get 60 to 90 millimeters. So we're looking at, you know, a general inch to about two, maybe three inches in some of these heavy rain. The big story is going to be out here. Look at this, West Coast. That's going to be 100 to 200 millimeters, four to eight inches. And look at this, across parts of the central 
and eastern provinces as well in the far north towards Hudson Bay. It's a little stormy as well. And before we continue with more weather, check out these awesome, amazing maps that you won't find anywhere else. I am proud to announce that I am now an affiliate with Trilogy Maps. TrilogyMaps.com bringing you the most digital, customizable maps found nowhere else on the internet. These maps are simply stunning. It's an advanced layering system that makes these maps great for making forecast maps with ease or any other other maps that you would like to display important information on. The resolution on these maps is simply amazing. From the detail of everything here in the states, and you can also create stunning digital professional layered maps from also across the entire world. And don't forget in checkout, the discount code option, use my code MEDIUMARK, hit apply, and you will get 20% off your order. So if you want the most professional, customizable, and affordable weather maps found nowhere else on the internet, look no further than TrilogyMaps.com. Link in the description down below along with your discount code. And your temperatures here. Yeah, they're being held down here into the northeast uh, on Wednesday with the clouds and the precipitation. Uh, 60s most areas, but that's pretty temperate for this time of year. Look at the heat, though, building in the Central Plains. California's roasting out here in the Gulf Coast is right around 90 degrees as we head into Thursday. We're going to push that warmth towards the northeast here. Look at the Ohio Valley breaking out into the mid to high 70s. It's at lower 70s into the northeast here, but watch this. Here into the northern lakes, that's where we get down into the 60s, but this does not look like early October. Look at these 90s and 80s bubbling up here into the parts of the Ohio Valley, even mid to upper 70s in parts of the northeast. And as we get into Saturday, October 5th here, look at this. Yeah, the only cooler air you can see, if you can call that cool for this time of year, mid to upper 60s. That's actually really nice. And look at these 90s in the central plains. That is crazy. We are staying way too warm uh, these are well above averages here. Look at the 60s. you got to go way to the far north here into Monday, October 7th. Look at this. Yeah, this is the only area where you can see a little bit of touch of fall. A standard forecast from hometown viewers. Bingham Dennis Grand. So first off, River Valley of New York and Pennsylvania. Yeah, Wednesday we're going to see some scattered showers. It's going to hold it down around 60 degrees. It's going to be one of those days that's more average for this time of year. The clouds lift on Thursday and Friday. Look at that lower 70s into Saturday. Upper 60s are right around 70. Look at that. Saturday night, good sleeping weather down to the upper 30s, lower 40s. And then Sunday, looking nice as well. As always, thank you for joining me for this edition of Media Mark's Weather. Also, don't forget to join me on Facebook at Media Mark, also Weather Northeastern, also Twitter at Weather Eastern. Don't forget it's MediaMark.com. And don't forget, if you want to send me a coffee, there is a link, Super Thanks. You can smash that Super Thanks button or my PayPal link in the description down below. You can buy me a cup of coffee. Thanks, everyone. Share that video. Subscribe if you haven't. Smash that like button.